Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land. I'm your host, Raleigh Marks, bringing you today's top stories. And we start off in Gaza, where factions within the Gaza Strip have threatened to destroy or to ruin Eurovision. And they're claiming that if Israel break some of the unofficial uh, agreements, they will resume arson attacks on communities in southern Israel as well as rocket attacks. Now, we're not exactly sure what uh, these unofficial agreements are or how Israel could possibly break them, but uh, these factions have made these threats and in response, the IDF has rolled out iron dome batteries all over the country in anticipation of what could be a barrage of rocket attacks during the Eurovision contest. And uh, while we're discussing Eurovision, just a a quick note to tell everybody that yesterday, a number of high-profile celebrities, including Sharon Osbourne, actor Stephen Fry, uh, Kiss frontman Gene Simmons, all signed a petition against boycotts of Eurovision. I knew there was a reason we loved Shazza Osbourne. Now we have it. Uh, all in agreement that uh, boycotts are counterproductive to peace efforts. But hey, that's what Lay of the Land's been telling you all along. Uh, more further afield, we now go to the United States where the uh, Poway Chabad killer has made his first appearance in court. And as I mentioned over the course of the week, I will not be mentioning his name. I will not give him the notoriety that he uh, that he wants because he declared that he does hope that others follow in his footsteps. What I will tell you is that he is a 19-year-old student. His family have released a statement condemning his actions and saying this is not how he was raised. He was raised to respect people of other races and other religions and they are devastated that uh, he is responsible for the age-old persecution and devil, or he joins the list that is responsible for the age-old devast- uh, persecution of the Jewish people and uh, the hatred. They have also refused to pay his legal bills. But uh, he did plead not guilty on charges of murder and arson in court uh, today. The judge has refused him bail, saying he is an extreme threat to society. He is facing charges for the murder of Laurie Gilbert K. May she rest in peace and injuring three others as well as charges of arson. And if convicted, he could face life imprisonment or the death penalty. San Diego is in California. California is a death penalty state and uh, it remains to be seen and I'm sure details will unfold whether or not the prosecution will be seeking the death penalty. Now, uh, tonight is Erev Yom HaShoah, the eve of Holocaust Martyrs and Memorial Day here in Israel. Our day is separate to International Holocaust Memorial Day, which takes place on the 27th of January every year in commemoration with the liberation of Auschwitz. This is a day that Israel sets aside, especially for the Jewish victims of the Holocaust. We know that uh, the victims weren't all Jews, but most of them were Jews, and Jews were the only community that were marked and uh, signed for death from birth to the age, no exceptions. Uh, In a few hours as the sun sets, Israel, the mood of the country will change, restaurants will close, I, along with many others around the country, will light a memorial candle in memory of the six million precious souls we lost during the Holocaust. Tomorrow, a siren will wail uh, around the country and everybody, whether you are in your car, whether you are on the train, whatever you are doing, will stop what they're doing and bow their heads for a minute as we remember the six million martyrs and heroes who paid with their lives simply because they were Jewish. Also, uh, all the programming on television will change and Israel will mark this very, very somber and uh, painful day. And uh, while we're talking about the the Holocaust and we have been talking about incidents of anti-Semitism over the last week, especially in light of the shooting in Poway, especially in light of the cartoon in the New York Times, I I want to share a personal story. 
last night I was referred to by somebody as a shitty Jew uh, in a online uh, debate and argument as a result of uh, a, a, an exchange of email as an exchange of op-ed sorry in two major newspapers in South Africa this person took uh, exception to me and referred to me no less than four times as a shitty Jew and made the distinction between Jews that he considers good Jews and those are anti-Zionist Jews who renounce the state of Israel and uh, people like Ronnie Casriles who South Africans will be very very familiar with and who he calls shitty Jews. In other words, me and uh, other, other Jews who are proudly Jewish, proudly Zionists. Uh, he does consider himself an atheist. And uh, he also made the comparison between me and Bernie Madoff. And this distinction, this dividing Jews between good, who is palatable, who denounces Israel and uh, the right to national liberation, and those who are bad... Uh, those like me who are very proud of our Jewish heritage, very proud of our roots and very proud of the state of Israel and all its contributions to, uh, to the world, to society, um, is anti-Semitic and it is blatant racism and discrimination in its own and will not be countenanced and uh, uh, he will not be allowed to get away with referring to me like that. But it is a, a brutal reminder that anti-Semitism did not die with the liberation of the gas chambers. In fact, levels of anti-Semitism are at their highest level since before World War II. The Anti-Defamation League uh, uh, reporting that levels in the United States are, are up triple and elsewhere around the world, in Europe, in uh, uh, places like uh, South Africa, in places like uh, the UK, where it's more politicised anti-Semitism. So I urge everybody who is watching this, on this area of Yom HaShoah, as we bow our heads and we remember the six millions and we remember the, the vow we took that never again to not stand by silently in the face of anti-Semitism or any kind of hatred, be it a racism of any kind, homophobia of any kind, uh, um, racism against Muslim people I urge you all to, to, to take a minute to stand up against hatred to remember that never again must be never again and that we honour the memories of those who perished because of racism because of hatred that today we stand up and we fight and we don't allow for hatred to go unchecked ever again now, just a reminder that because it's Yom HaShoah, there will be a lot of content online on our website at www.layoftheland.online. Tonight, you can read Erwin Blank's account of his family's uh, experience during the war and why a day like Yom HaShoah is a day to be sanctified. And tomorrow, in a very, very special edition, uh, my co-founder and I, Dave Kaplan, we share our experiences interviewing the man who prosecuted Eichmann, uh, Judge Gabriel Bach, a Supreme Court the Justice from Israel, who was one of the uh, team of prosecutors who prosecuted the monster that was Adolf Eichmann, and uh, that's sure to be a treat. And also, our Facebook community is growing in leaps and bounds, and we welcome all you new members. And uh, if you want to join, don't forget, you can like us and follow us on Facebook at Lottel Site and invite your friends to join as well. And to get your daily edition of the Israel Brief, simply click on the subscribe button below and uh, I will pop up on a device near you. I'm Raleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief. And this brief is dedicated to the memory of all who perished in the Holocaust.